Hola, cloud subscriber. Good to see you. Did you know that inside of Blender you can access hundreds of textures and HDR images? That's the part where you say, no, how do I do it? Well, it's good that you're asking because I have a file here prepared where we can see how to set it up, how to use this. This image was downloaded from the Blender cloud. So let's do how to do it. But everything is ready here. So that's kind of lame. Let's do it from scratch so you can actually do it on your own files as well. So first step is to get the Blender Cloud add-on that is available on cloud.blender.org slash services. Then you can download the latest version. It has been updated for Blender 2.8 and it should also work with 2.7. So it should just be pretty much the same regardless of which Blender you're using. So the only thing you need to do to start using the add-on is to save your Blender file because the textures have to go somewhere, right? So for example, if I save my file here, then I can already start using the textures. So how to access it? Well, it has a funny <laughs> shortcut. Uh, it's it's a Control Shift Alt A. How do you remember that? Because it's all the uh, Control Shift Alt, all the <laughs> all the keys, and then A is like adding. So what what's happening right now? Well, basically, what's happening is if I move myself down here, it's uh, showing me all the folders available with textures and images, my, my libraries, that I have on my Blender Cloud. So uh, the ones that you're going to see by default is HDRI and textures. But there's also some project that's coming in this for, which I wonder what that is. Uh, but uh, other projects that I have shared with my, with my colleagues. So let's see, for example, HDRI. So let's um, find, for example, a nice image. This one is very nice and red, so I'm gonna download it. So what happened now? What 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 happened? What did I do? Well, what I did was actually downloading it, so it's available in Blender as an image data block. So I could just, for example, go to uh, first. Let's make a nice monkey, nice smooth, and I can go to the shading. Um, workspace just so I can already see it with some environment. I'm going to use the world um, environment and lights. So uh, let's load it as a background, for example. I don't need this part and I don't need this. So let's go to the world and let's add a environment, uh, environment node, texture node. And just as simple as, con well, pink, and then uh, just selecting it from the list and you will see that you have the inside wooden tent um, HDR. And it's a bit dark because the, by default the strength is in one, but you can put it all the way up because it's super high dynamic range. So you can already see it in action. And uh, that's pretty much it. That is how you load, you load a texture. But for example, let's say, um, let's go to the camera view. And uh, you will see, you will notice that the resolution is kind of low um, by default. And that is because, so let me here, let's find a nice shot for this monkey. Um, you will see that the resolution is a bit uh, low because for uh, having a quick preview, Blender downloaded the uh, 1K version. So it's very, very um, um, yeah, blurred, but it's fast to load. So if you want to make it uh, get a higher resolution, you can press um, N or go to the properties of the of the node or the properties also of uh, if you're loading it in the image editor, it's in the same same panel. So you will find here that there is a little cute cloud icon that says HDRI. And then you can choose which resolution. You can go one up to 16K. So I don't know if I would go that far, but if I load a 4K, I already should tell the difference. Actually, a 2K already should be enough. So if I click replace, Blender will start downloading this image and it should replace it here in the background. So pay attention to, oh, now, now you can actually see more detail. And this will uh, affect everything. It will, of course, uh, show up on your reflections. So for example, if I set up my monkey here to be a bit more reflective, less rough, I should see the the effect everywhere so let's make it a bit more a bit more appealing so if i for example want to rotate the the, the image the background that's uh, pretty simple actually that doesn't have anything to do with the blender cloud add-on that um, you can add a mapping uh, node there but the fastest ways to use the node wrangler 
And once you enable the Node Wrangler add-on, you can select the environment texture or any texture and then do Ctrl T for texture, I guess. And it will uh, add this mapping um, node that you can just basically rotate the Z and you can move it around and you can see the reflections actually already happening. So that is pretty neat. It's, uh, it's actually a really fast way to prototype uh, let's try and make this a bit more appealing. So I'm going to enable depth of field for my camera and I'm going to set the focus distance um, to these objects. I'm going to press E on the this slider, focus distance, so I can click on here on the monkey and let's lower the f-stops to make it a bit more dramatic. Because you can really see here, for example, in the bokeh effect, you can see the difference when I choose um, the 1K version you see that the bokeh is a, it's a lot more soft. And uh, let's see if I can handle an AK version. So now it's going to take a while because it's probably a few hundred megabytes that is downloaded right now. And But the bokeh should be like crisp, 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 crisp. So let's give it a, a, a moment to come from the internet. And it should, should, there you go. So now it's pretty round and wow, such bokeh match resolution <laughs> awesome so uh, that is pretty much uh, it actually this this with this um um uh, this way of working you can not only use it for um, the hdrr images but also for regular texture so for example if i have um let's say i want to have a so let's make a floor here like i had it before and uh let's make this a bit prettier it's like nobody's running after us, right? There you go. And then let's say I want to have a um, more like um, a door. Let's add a door. So I'm going to add a plane here. And before actually making the geometry, I should get texture. So let's hit it again, Ctrl L Shift A. And then let's, I don't want an HDRI, but I'm going to go up to the top level and go to textures folder and then you can find all kinds of textures that come from the blender cloud library um, doors and let's find some door let's find something that it's interesting this one with the two o's here so you click on it it's downloaded the texture and now it's available as a data block so now i can actually make the the geometry I could have done it before, but I think it's better to do it later because then you know what more or less are the proportions that you need. So, okay, this will be my door. I will uh, make a new material, change to object, new material, and add a um, image texture. And it should be available here. Yes, door 11 color. So then I connect it and voila, it's there. So this is my doors. <laughs> Sort of. Yes, it is. Awesome. And uh, then the same happens with the with the with the texture with the resolution. You can choose any resolution you want. You just change it, and uh, you just load the different uh, resolutions available for that one. For the uh, um, HDRs are available for the textures, and uh, they are not. They're just the same. Um, there is pretty high resolution ones actually. This one is three four K almost three K by four K. So. Um, pay attention to that. Um, make sure that you, if your internet is uh, fast enough for this, or just give it a bit more patience. Of course, this is all browsable inside of Blender Cloud. You don't have to see it or everything from the um, from the uh, add-on itself. You can go to libraries, textures, and then here, for example, you will find all the doors. And then inside of the doors, you have all the ones. This is the one that I was actually using it and you can find here the size and everything so it's uh this is not seamless but there's a bunch of textures that are seamless this is a door of course it's not seamless but uh yeah with this actually with this principle you can use uh, pretty much anything it's awesome it's all within blender and the, actually my favorite is just being able to access my own texture library which i can share with other people on my projects on blender cloud so remember, all the textures here are um, they are public domain, so you can do whatever you want with them. You can use them commercially or not. You can draw a put an emoji on all the textures and share them again. You can do whatever you want, and it's um, it's a great way to give a bit more uh, uh, to make a, your scenes a bit nicer. So. 
I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this this feature has been around for years already. It's just not. It's a bit nicer because of 2.8, and um, it, it's a good way to reshare these kind of things. But it has been around for years. So go and uh, make a good use of your Blender Cloud subscription by using the textures, making your own, sharing your own, and uh, keep making awesome stuff. So thanks once again for watching, and I will see you again in the next video. Ciao.